Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2019 Chevy Equinox, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster 12 volt outlet kit. But before we do that, let's check it out and make sure that this is gonna be something uh, that you're actually gonna need. So underneath your driver's side dashboard, here we have our 12 volt uh, outlet. And that's what it's gonna look like once it's installed. Now the whole reason for this, or the big reason that you would need this, is if you're flat towing your vehicle and you've decided to use a portable type braking system. Those portable type braking systems obviously need 12 volt power to work properly. And the majority of them uh, use a cigarette type plug. So this, they have a plug that'll go into the into the housing there and that's what's going to power them up now the issue is you know you're probably thinking well my car already has one of these from the factory right just about every single one of them does the thing is with the equinox whenever it's in flat tow mode that uh connector plug that factory one is not going to have power so you're not able to use that so you're going to need a plug that's going to have constant 12 volt power uh, whenever you're flat towing it, that way you can plug your braking system into it. And that's exactly what this one's going to do. So this one's going to be hardwired directly to the battery and always have power, regardless if your car is running, turned off, in flat tow mode, not in flat tow mode. All the time it's going to have that 12 volt power, that way you're able to plug in your braking system and have the confidence knowing that's going to have the proper voltage to work correctly. So the kit is going to come with a bracket so you can mount it up like this. Uh, in most cases, I would probably leave it like this. You know, it's out of the way, but still easy to get to. However, though, there's enough wire there. If your braking system's cord don't reach, you can always pop that out and, you know, be able to pull this cable out some and, and plug it in over here, or, you know, if it's on this side or whatever. So you definitely have the length that you need there. Um, if your braking system has a real short cord. And then when you're done with it, of course you can kind of just pop it back up in that bracket, and tuck your wiring out of the way again. So that's really all there is to it inside of the vehicle. Here under the hood, you know, the outlet kit is gonna receive power from your positive battery post. And then of course ground from a ground post. Now, one thing I definitely suggest doing is changing out the included fuse holder okay so this is the one it comes with and um, it's a older style uh, bus bar type fuse I believe they call it and it'll work that's just fine but you know you're gonna have to modify this anyway so in order to feed the wires up into the engine compartment you know unless you drill a gigantic hole in the firewall you're, you're probably not gonna run this whole thing through it so you're gonna have to cut it off anyway and then, you know, this end obviously isn't going to go to your battery post, so you'll have to cut that off and put a ring terminal on it. So if I'm going through the trouble, I'm just going to switch it to something a little more modern. This is what I switch it to, just kind of your standard fuse holder. Um, you know, you're going to need a 20 amp fuse to put in here. I used a butt connector and then um, a yellow larger type ring terminal. And this just kind of brings it you know, up to date, makes more sense. If you ever do pop a fuse, you're gonna be able to find one of these a lot easier, maybe even have one laying around as opposed to the older type fuse. And um, same's gonna hold true with the ring terminal on the negative side of the cable. So they give you a pre-attached one, but it's really small. And sure, you could screw it into the body of your vehicle, but why bother if there's a ground post there? So. You know, can you make it work without this stuff? Absolutely. But if it were me, you know, take a little bit of extra time, probably set it up this way. Other than that though, as far as getting this installed, we kind of just essentially talked about it. Really simple, you're gonna mount up your bracket in there, run your wires up through here, and hook it up to power, hook it up to ground. That's really all there is to it. So uh, shouldn't really run into uh, too many issues or take you a whole lot of time. If you'd like to see how that's done, feel free to stick around. We'll go ahead and hook it up together now. 
To begin our installation, we're gonna be here on the driver's side of our vehicle, and we're gonna be working right underneath the dash uh, towards the outside of the car here on our kick panel. So on the kick panel, the first thing that we need to do is mount up our bracket. And um, I just simply secured it to our kick panel there. You can use self-tapping screws if you want. Um, I just drilled out two small holes and used a nut and a bolt. I feel like it just worked a little bit better. But then from there, you're gonna take the, uh, the end of your wire, push it through your bracket. That way this can sit inside of the bracket like that. If I can get it like that. And so the end of this wire here is gonna have to go into the engine compartment. Um, what I did, was actually cut off. So one end of the wire will have this fuse holder on it. The other end will just have this ring terminal. And it's nearly impossible to get this into the engine compartment unless you just drill a gigantic hole. Um, really not wanting to do that. So I cut these off. We'll get them fixed up here in a minute. But with those cut off, now we can take our wire and run it uh, into the engine compartment. And what I had to do is up here in this area, drill a small hole, that way we could feed the wires uh, through the firewall. So right here on the firewall, that's where I drilled our hole. Um, be really careful when you're doing this, make sure you're not gonna hit anything on either side. Um, so this little indention there is actually a pretty good spot. So I drilled a hole um, and I, I had a grommet in there, but it ended up falling through not really a big deal. What I did was just take a piece of vacuum tubing, cut it in half, wrapped it around our wires and jammed it in there and it actually worked out really good. That way the wires aren't rubbing up against bare metal or anything like that. So I fed them all the way through and then we can go into the engine compartment and uh, get the wires hooked up. So in the engine compartment, here's where our wires come through and these are going to get hooked up to our battery. Um, the ground side of the wire, this one, I just crimped on a ring terminal. This side, I opted just to use a more modern type fuse holder. So I got that connected using a buck connector. The other end here, we need to put on a ring terminal. So the way you make these connections is you strip back the insulation, twist the wire, then take your ring terminal, slide it over the bare end, and crimp it down like that. Then make sure there's no fuse installed in it. Eventually we're gonna put in this 20 amp fuse, but we'll wait to get that hooked up. So first things first, we'll hook up our ground. I'm gonna use this post right here. So that's a 10 millimeter nut. We can pull that off. Slide on our ring terminal. And then tighten that nut back down. And then as far as the other one goes, you need to hook that to the positive battery post. So we'll just get this cover out of the way and we can hook it up there. So again, we'll loosen up this nut with a 10 millimeter. This nut actually isn't designed to come off all the way, uh, just kind of the way it is. So back it off a little ways. And what we're gonna do is take our ring terminal and just cut an opening in it That's something like that. And we can just work that in. We'll just tighten it up back down.
And once it's tight, at this point, we can grab our fuse and place it into the holder. So now it's a good idea just to test this to make sure uh, that we're actually getting power and, and verify that we uh, did the job correctly. So I just grabbed a phone charger deal here and we'll plug it in and we should see it uh, power up. So we have power and we know uh, the plug is, is gonna work properly. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster 12 volt outlet kit here on our 2019 Chevrolet Equinox.